God made his people into a great nation. And later, when they were enslaved, he rescued them with his mighty arm. He loved them and gave them laws to live by so that they might live together in peace and harmony. But most of all, he asked them to love and trust in him alone. Listen, Israel, the Eternal is our true God. He alone. You should love him, your true God, with all your heart and soul and every ounce of your strength. Make the things I'm commanding you today part of who you are. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you're sitting together in your homes. And when you're walking down the road together. Make them the last thing you talk about before you go to bed. And the first thing you talk about the next morning. The Eternal, your God, promised your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give you this land. When this happens, be very, very careful. Do not forget it was the Eternal who brought you out of Egypt, where you were slaves. Worship Him, your true God, and serve Him and swear oath only in His name. Don't become devoted to any of the gods the people around you worship. The Eternal, your God, is right here, living among you. He's a jealous God. He would become furious if you were unfaithful to him. He would wipe you off the face of the earth. God wanted only the best for his people. In order to receive his blessings, they had only to trust and obey him. to come. 
compassion by the groans of his people when they were persecuted and oppressed. But when that judge died, the people would fall away from their faithfulness, and the next generation behaved even worse than their ancestors, seeking and pursuing other gods and bowing down before them. They would not give up their bad habits, but clung to them stubbornly. In those days of the judges, there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what seemed right in his own eyes. But even then, the people weren't happy. They wanted more. So the elders of Israel gathered at Ramah to tell Samuel, You have grown old, Samuel, and your sons do not administer justice in the way that you did before things worsened. Appoint a king to rule over us, as many other nations have. This request, appoint a king to rule over us, bothered Samuel, and he prayed to the Eternal and received an answer. Listen to what the people are asking you to do. It is not a rejection of you. It is a rejection of my rule over them. So God gave them the king they wanted. First was Saul. Then David. And then Solomon. Solomon, there were a number of kings, some good, some evil, but mostly evil. What the people needed most was the king they had rejected in the first place. What they needed was the king of kings.
told of a coming king, the savior who would save the people from themselves. Watch, for the days are coming when I will rise up, a righteous branch of David, an heir of his royal line, who will rule justly, act wisely, and make things right in this land. During his reign, Judea will be redeemed, and Jerusalem will be a safe place once again. His name will tell the story. The Eternal One is our righteousness. These are the words of the Eternal One, the commander of the heavenly armies. Pay attention, for I am sending my messenger, and he will clear the road ahead for me. The Lord you see shall suddenly appear in his temple, and the messenger of God's covenant, your soul's delight. Watch, for he too is coming. And he will stand and feed his flocks in the power of the Eternal One, with the majesty of the name of the Eternal, his true God. And they will live in safety, for his greatness will extend to the farthest parts of the earth. He will be our peace. A shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. The, the Redeemer, Redeemer will come to make Zion rise again. again. 